Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I would say congratulations to Wienerberg uh, to its 200 years anniversary. It's a very long time and a lot of changes in 200 years. You have to go back uh, and it's unbelievable what changed over this time. And it's also the topic of the Vienna Biennale. Uh, change is constantly happening and uh, I think like one subline is change is the only way. And like from my side, there is this uh, scarcity of resources and then we have like this democratic crisis and all this affects architecture. And so I'm gonna present a little bit about this. Um, you see here one image, uh, it shows most likely in 2012, we founded the company uh, with five partners. Um, we think it's more like a platform where we present different works. Like we work in the field of architecture, design, computer graphic, and at the beginning even at sound. Um, so like we have a very broad range of different projects and to tackle those and not to lose too much time on dis discussing those projects, uh, one certain thing about most likely is, or special thing is that we, that we create our own working methods. And today I'm gonna present one of these working methods which is called, like you see here, most likely, this is our label, and there is this subline, sudden workshop, and so this is like one working method. We have many more. We, we like a micro giants with many departments. Um, and the sudden workshop, it's, it's about a workshop where you can produce things, or like installation, micro architecture, and sudden is that it's like built up uh, temporarily, so suddenly it's there and then it's gone again. And we hope that we can produce positive effects and changes in the urban fabric. And so you see here, this is now called the first sudden workshop project. At this time, we didn't even know that we're gonna found this working method. And five uh, artists, they came up to the office and uh, they bought a market stall at a very rundown place in Vienna. And the government even wanted to tear down this market place. It's in the 15th district. And um, the artist said, okay, we're gonna buy one of those stalls and we, we want to make like an open community hub and try to change the whole marketplace. And inside it even looked worse and then we asked them, uh, what's your budget? And the budget was so low that normally they would have to give us all their money. And so we said, okay, um, still their motivation was so interesting. Like what can you achieve um, if you have very engaging ideas? Um, so we said, okay, nevertheless, we're gonna do it. Um, we don't make a competition. We, we put our workforce into this one project and um, so we somehow told them how to renovate everything, electricity, plumbers, and when they're finished, they should call us again. And we, we designed them some furniture and uh, all of, out of one wooden board because like wooden boards are easy to saw. You just need a, a chop saw and you need a, a cordless screwdriver to fix them together. So this was a very minimal tool set, um, which is quite important. Um, and so you see here, they, they started to work and they painted everything, made, made the, they kept the floor. And this is the result um, of, the, of the market stall. You can see like the furnitures. I don't know, if you have a laser pointer? Yeah, I think you see it anyway. It's just like this one wooden format of, um, and we built those furnitures, they painted it. And like for me, this, the result, like the visual result is not so important. Like it's more like what can be the impact of it? And like this is another perspective. And the interesting thing was that they, there was some wood left over 
and they kept on building, um, building um, small scale micro architecture what the marketplace needed. Like you can see here, two mobile market stall and they were open for public. Like everybody who wanted to sell something on this marketplace could rent it. And those small minimum maximum chairs, um, they were produced by, by the inhabitants of, of this area. And it was for a summer, in summertime there was an open public cinema taking place. And so you can see here, um, where's the laser pointer? Right here. Yeah. Like this, this small here, this was the, the market stall. And there was nine other ones. Most of them were empty. And after a year, all of them are operated again. And this is like the public market space. And there were a lot of communities and a lot of, of, of person initiatives who, who organized the, the market. And so we could, with, it was like a process of many people. It was not just most likely. Um, there were some, some other people who were engaged. And with only very little money, we saved this whole spot. And I think that's also a discussion because we are looking here at high-rise building and they are like, if the economy is doing well, um, you can build new building and very big ones. But what's happening like with the outer spaces or neglected spaces, what can you do there? And I don't think that building yourself everything can be the solution. Um, but like to maintain those spaces by, by the inhabitants, uh, you can bring in a lot of quality because it's the small grocery store. It's, it's like where you can peep, uh, meet people and that's why marketplaces are so popular nowadays. And with this experience we said, okay, um, we really um, succeeded in, in changing a lot of things with uh, a lot of people. And so we, we're gonna, we wanna keep on with this working method and we said, okay, we're gonna build the city, we're gonna look at neglected places, empty spaces, and build a new vision of a common space city model. And like, maybe some of you know the dogma films, they have like certain rules. And we also said, okay, we, we want to create a, a basic set of rules, like everybody can understand. Uh, they are like, we just use two boards formats then the, the tool sets should be minimal. We just use one chop saw. So at the end, like the, the whole workshop can be mobile and you can go to, to the places where you really want to work and get in contact with the people. Because at the end, we want the people to build the stuff, to get involved. And also like, we know that like, if you have 10 people, you can build something small. If you have 100 people, you can build something bigger and, and so on. So like you really have to get involved a lot of people and um, so the, the things have to be very basic. And then there is the rule number six, which is very important for our city model. The things we build, they, they are not privately owned. Like we would never build your private uh, cupboard for your, or your private kitchen. But all the things we build, they have to be in public use and nobody can possess it. And at the end, what we want to succeed with the Sun Workshop, we want to show the people that they can shape their own city. Because like, at the end, it's the engagement of the people as well. And so and I show now two more uh, projects. Um, like here you can see, we had within two years, we had seven station of the mobile workshop, of the Sun Workshop and we accomplished nine projects. We started very small, like the first one was at Schwendermarkt, and they got bigger and bigger, involved more and more people. So it was a very intense time. Um, and like now these two projects I'm gonna show is, uh, this is like a social housing complex. It's the biggest one and it was built in the interwar time and I think more than 5,000 people lived there, and it was, at this time, it was revolutionary because they had a lot of uh, communal administered places, like a communal kitchen, they had a cinema, they had a library, 
they had sport facilities, but all of these facilities are empty. I think um, they have like 80% of these community facilities are not operated anymore. And so even if uh, the municipality would hand over money to the people, they wouldn't even know what to do. And so in the first step, uh, when you do like a participation, you have to get the ideas of the people. And so that was our idea. You can see like the, that back ward area. This was like the, the entrance of the cinema. And we built a 100 meter long kitchen table. And we wanted to build it with the people who live there, with the inhabitants. And at this time, the sudden workshop idea was already a little bit known. And so we promoted it, and we, we sent more than 5,000 postcards to each flat. And we thought um, like 100 people will come to the, to the temporary workshop. And at the end, uh, nobody showed up. So it was really, uh, we were standing there alone. Um, like at this time, we already got supported by the Austrian wood industry. They supported us with material and also a little bit with money. Uh, so we could finance all those ideas. And so we involved um, an initiative who, uh, which is called Nut and Feder, and asylum seekers can work there, and they helped us to build this idea of the 100 meter long uh, table. But as you can see uh, in this drawing, there you, you can't sit on the table. So because we said, okay, we don't build the stools, at least they have to build their own stools, and if they don't, then nobody will eat. And so at the beginning, uh, we made like a 14-day festival. Uh, we cooperated with Soho in Ottergring. And at the beginning, the, the 100 meter long kitchen table uh, was completed. And it was the opening. And as nobody could sit on the table, everybody was sitting on, on the table, under the table, beneath. You couldn't see anything of the installation anymore. And uh, then we started to dismount the red table, uh, the red wood of, of the table. And with, with these, you could build the stools and sit down. And what was happening is the 100 meter long table got shorter and shorter. So the people really had to sit close together and uh, they had to build their own stool. And they started to talk about and of course, they were talking about the empty spaces in this communal housing. And finally, they came up with a lot of ideas. They wanted to keep uh, on with the, with the workshop. And also, they wanted to uh, start a new community um, kitchen. And I think that's normally, when you think about participation in architecture, you think about uh, a room and about people with endless discussion. And I think there's nothing less sexy than having all those discussions going on without uh, being able to realize your ideas. And so they could uh, somehow, they, they started while doing the, while building those tools, they started to think about it. And it's another level where you can uh, get together and discuss ideas. And so we achieved at the end that there were a lot of ideas what they could do with those empty buildings. And now the next step would be that the municipality would give the money and to refurbish all those spaces. And Vienna has a lot of uh, communal housing complexes which are empty. So it's a huge problem. And here you see like this was Bernhard. Um, he wanted to design his own bar table. So like more and more people came into the workshop and, and built stuff for the outside. And then we moved on, because as I told you, like within two years, like we had seven stations, so we were like two months for, for every project, more or less. Um, then the next project I show is in cooperation with Team Wien. Um, Team Wien is, uh, is an, a club of, of young Austrian, you can say, designer, architects. And um, because also if you want to change the situation, often you can do it alone. So you, in a way you have to cooperate. And um, also like the thing you see now, the, the project, it was exhibited by the Biennale two years ago. 
so it's also, that's why I also chose it to show it. And the idea, like we started to meet uh, Team Wien and it was, for us it was very exciting. Also to get in touch with the, with the other offices. We read about them, we heard about them and suddenly we were cooperating. And like Vienna has a big parking lot right in the center. And uh, like it's very, uh, like the land costs are huge. So it's very valuable and they're just parking cars all the time. And it's next to a market, so also a lot of people pass by. And we were thinking, okay, if we can, if we can grab this kind of land, what are we gonna build? Like, we are not gonna build another market, and we are not gonna build another museum. So, like, we wanted to build a structure, and that everybody could rent the structure. So, like, if you if you produce your own things, sometimes you only want to sell something for a month, and then maybe you can rent the structure. And of course, we didn't have the money now to build this uh, structure in, in, uh, as it should be at the end, but we could afford to build a prototype. So it's a lot about prototyping in, in the work of Sun Workshop. And you can see here, this is what we could afford to build, those four cubes and a stage. And we also set up a, a homepage uh, where you can book the, the different modules. And like one was a workshop model, the other one was a kitchen, the other one was a stage, and the other one was like a co-working space outside. And I think we operated the whole structure for 30 days and more than 90, 90 bookings happened. Of, so there, there's really the need for it. And again, it shows that from an idea, you can come to a bigger briefing for a real building. Because as an architect, most of the time you get a briefing from the client, uh, please build this building in this, in this, in this manner. And most of the time those, those briefings are really bad. And that's why our, our cities, the, the things we build, often look the way. We are not free to choose because often somebody comes to me and says, Mark, you're an architect. Why? Why does look the new built cities so bad? And then I always have to explain, well, you know, we get a briefing, and if the briefing tells us to build 1,000 flats in a massive complex, um, it's hard to tell the client uh, we don't want to do it because then you're gonna lose it. So you can show them three or four alternatives, but if they don't work, at the end you can take the job or you can't. And the bigger you get as an office, the more you have to take this. So you see here some, some images of park. I I'm hope I'm in time. Yeah. Three minutes to go. These are just some images. There was also a long table. So the question is, what's the bigger picture of this working method? And, and so like these are all temporary prototypes, as I told. And the first thing is, uh, after those seven or seven stations, we said, okay, let's analyze and be critical. Because like we don't want to be another Biedermeier just producing nice stuff. We really want to change uh, the city. And at the end, it's not important that we build this building or the, the change but that we somehow get into this briefing. And I've seen, we have seen some good examples today. Um, oh, that's the wrong. So like one outcome was the four new typologies. And we heard a lot about markets, workshops, also like co-working. Um, and if those buildings, um, if they are not purely privately operated, but if those buildings are also managed by, by the community and are more open for your use, um, suddenly you get a complete different image of a, what, what the city can be. Like if you walk in New York, for example, um, everything feels very exclusive because like every square meter has to be turned into money. And so it's just rented out. If you go somewhere inside, you have to pay for it. And I think like one of the urgent or most urgent thing next to the, our resource and problem is uh, that we keep our cities open. And so those four typologies 
we conceive them and the interesting thing is, the new thing about them is the way they are operated. Because they are, at the end, it's not the, the, the visual thing that's the impact, but it's more the way the people can use it. And so I don't know if this even is architecture, uh, but I think it's the broader role or understanding what architecture can be. And another outtake of this uh, three-year-long journey was that we, that we wrote our own idea of a city model, which we call like the common space model. And of course, for us, it's a working method, which we can use as a participatory tool. And I think that also if we now approach uh, an, a new job, we can we can somehow look at the, all the know-how we received and, and worked on to really design a process. So suddenly architecture, it's not just the finished building, but you also design the whole process. And um, that's when it can get very interesting for architects as well. So yes, there would be uh, many more to say. Uh, I hope I could give a small glimpse of what we are doing and what the Sudden Workshop is and how participatory processes can work. And hopefully we'll also see one of those open typologies realized. And thank you. <laughs>